Rabbit and Risley. They're here too. Good to see you, Traveler, Paimon. I trust all has been going well for you. Big news, everyone. The Udax is out of his office on important business. Hmm? Is that genuinely something people would consider big news? <laughs> Why wouldn't they? Important business is a big deal. Ah, yes, you're quite right. When someone you care about requires emotional support, being there for them at the right time and place is of the utmost importance. After reading the Marichal Say Phantom's reports, I had a feeling a trip here might be in order. Take note. That, my friends, is how Monsieur Nervillette shows that he cares. We're both here for the same purpose, actually. To accompany Sijuin as she pays her respects to her late teacher. So the old friend she mentioned was her teacher then? The witch? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Paimon didn't mean to be rude. It's only because Seedwing calls her that all the time, so... I doubt she considers that title to be offensive, Paimon. Don't worry. Indeed. In fact, I believe Seedwing would take it as a sign of affection. She has spoken of this doctor on many occasions, and it sounds like she was a truly generous individual. In those days, many people harbored prejudices against Melusines. She was the only teacher willing to take Sijuin on as a student. Wow! It's really nice of you two to be here for Sijuin. Guess you guys really look out for your younger colleagues, huh? A younger colleague? Well, that might be true for the Udex, but I'm not sure I can say the same. Sijuin served a sentence in the Fortress of Meripede hundreds of years ago, and after she did her time, she decided to stick around. She's been an integral part of our administration ever since. Strictly speaking, the head nurse has been around longer than most people in the fortress, myself included. Pretty sure that makes me the younger colleague. She served a sentence? Yes. Long before I became Udex, there was an ancient law in Fontaine that prohibited any attempt to transform another species into a human. Initially, I and most researchers believe this law to have been imposed due to ethical concerns. But now, it seems more likely that the law was nothing more than an insurance policy, a way for Egeria to ensure that her people would remain insulated from the truth, thus enabling them to lead more straightforward, happier lives. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. Sijuin had her reasons for choosing to obtain a human form, but the act was nonetheless in clear violation of the law. Could you tell us a little bit more about what happened back then? Certainly. Sijuin does not object to her close friends learning about her history. In fact, I first learned of it myself because she confessed the truth to me of her own volition. Even with their daughter so ill, they kicked you out? <sighs> Stubborn as always. And prejudice isn't a disease I can cure either. <sighs> Shame that I don't have the energy to get over there. <sighs> You're laughable, you old witch. You want to save everyone in Fontaine, but you can't even save the patient before you. Master, what are you... I discovered a strange disease, one I suspect that every Fontanian suffers from. But without witnesses or proof, no one will believe me. I had no choice but to experiment on myself to find a cure, but I hit a wall. And as you can see, it took a wretched toll on me. Then... I'll find a cure for you, then you can go cure her. There's no need. I am beyond saving now. There's nothing you can do. But, Master... As I said before, a doctor's duty is to treat whatever ailments they can. I know, but they don't trust me at all. That girl. She's your first ever patient, isn't she? Tell me, 
What cost are you willing to bear to see her cured? I'll do whatever it takes. Even if it means breaking the law and being punished for it? As long as I don't hurt anyone... Yes. <laughs> Spoken like a true student of mine. Then I shall make one more final gamble. And see my experiment through to its end. Leave me for now, and come back in two hours. If I am able to work this miracle, then I will have found a way to save all Fontanians, and I shall be able to help you treat that girl. If not, then it means there is one more disease in this world that I cannot treat. In that case, do not come looking for me. I will leave you a parting gift. An accidental discovery happened upon through my study of this strange disease. It has little use, but it will at least help you cure this one patient you can reach. When Sijuin returned, the miracle had not occurred. She found a potion bottle and a note on the table. After using the potion as instructed, she gained her current form, breaking Fontaine's law in the process. And after I had confirmed the veracity of the events, I gave my verdict. So that's what happened. I fear Sijuin only understood the full story after the truth about the dissolution of Fontanians was uncovered. When I reflected on all this with that knowledge in hand, I felt a deep sense of regret. As I use the law to uphold justice, there are times when I cannot help but acknowledge its ruthlessness. After the final details of the events surrounding Sijuin's transformation came to light, I checked several sources and, thankfully, the legal code does not require Sijuin to shoulder any additional punishment. Hmm. Wonder how she feels about all this. Since she invited you here, I imagine she intends to speak of these matters with you, no? On behalf of the Marechaussee Phantom, I would like to once again thank the Fortress of Meripede for your assistance in the response to yesterday's prison break. Our head nurse and the Traveler in Paimon did most of the heavy lifting, I would say. Sijuin seems to be in good spirits. I trust work hasn't been too hard on her lately? Well, she might be the only permanent medical staff in the fortress, but there's plenty of people with medical knowledge willing to help her out. I am most relieved to hear it. <laughs> the way you're asking after her well-being makes you sound like a concerned parent. Ah, well, I, I won't lie. I've always seen myself that way. Showing your age a bit there, don't you think? Indeed. Actually, I often forget just how much older I am than you. Well, while we're on the topic, what did you do before getting this job, anyway? Spend all day swimming in the sea, from east to west, and then north to south? Yes, and, uh, from the surface to the ocean floor on occasion. Wow. Impressive. Apologies, that was merely an attempt at humor. You can disregard what I said. <laughs> uh, that's impossible, I'm afraid. My imagination's already running wild. Ha! Huh. You're here! The old friend I mentioned was my teacher. When she passed, her body was nowhere to be found. All that's left of her is an empty tomb. And even that's deep underwater now. Seedween, the witch who gave you the magic potion, she was your teacher, wasn't she? <laughs> Sounds like Monsieur Nervulet filled you in. After learning the truth, it must have been hard to process, huh? Well, to be honest, after I realized what really happened that night, my first thought was that it kind of made sense. It seemed exactly like the sort of thing she would do. What 
She was planning to sacrifice herself and never told you. That's just who she was. If lying is what it took to get a kid to take their medicine, then that's what she'd do. All right, but why did you turn yourself in? I broke the law, simple as that. My teacher made her choice, and I made mine. True. It's just... The way Potten framed it when he was asking you all those questions, it made Paimon really mad. You don't like him at all, and everything Nervalet said confirms that. And yet, you were still convicted and thrown in prison. It just feels so unfair. <sighs> unfair? I happen to think just the opposite. If I hadn't served that time, I'm not sure I would have been able to stay strong when he was questioning me. Well, what makes you say that? I knew you'd be curious. Let me tell you a story. The verdict came down. This Melazine is guilty. The Udex defended the authority of Fontaine Law, but he did not confiscate the Melazine's medical kit. And so, the Fortress of Meripede gained a new little doctor. She still wore her hood and raincoat, even though it never rained in the fortress. Perhaps thanks to her human appearance, no one refused her treatment. She treated more and more patients, and her sentence grew ever shorter. Finally, the people of the fortress could not live without her, and though her sentence ended, she did not leave them either. Then one day, she received an invitation from the outside world. The location seemed familiar, and when she arrived, an old lady was waiting for her. She saw right through the Melazine's disguise, but didn't reveal it. Instead, she asked a question. Tell me, why do you think you gained the respect of so many people, despite being a Melazine? Because... I look like a human? <laughs> it's been 50 years, Sijuin. And you haven't aged a day. I think everyone knows you are not human. I finally found you, after all these years. I still remember, you know. It was you who saved me that night. <gasps> but... how? I was no longer a Melazine by then. Does it really matter if you're human or Melazine? <sighs> I remember the warmth of your palm. <sighs> it's quite unmistakable. And you know what? It hasn't changed one bit. You don't have to hide anymore, Sijuin. These days, everyone wants to make friends with Melusines. And I think that it's all because of you. I'm sorry I couldn't say this until now, but thank you, Dr. Melusine. Now that's an ending Paimon can get behind. After hearing everything Potten said, I wanted to tell him that it didn't matter who he looked like on the outside. But it was too late. The warmth in his palm had already disappeared. I tried to treat him, but the roots of his problem had nothing to do with his face. I understand. Thanks, you two. I appreciate you being here for me while I talk this through. Oh, it's nothing. Our pleasure. Oh, there's one more reason I invited you here. It's about time I finally give you what I promised. In order to restore the appearances of the face-swapping victims, the Marishose Phantom gave me special permission to make a few bottles of that potion. And I made one extra just for you two. Uh, we don't need it though. Shouldn't we destroy it? Well, even if you chose to destroy it, I still thought I should give it to you first. You two did so much for me. 
How could I break my promise? Well, fair enough, but anyway, Hyman's definitely not interested in this stuff anymore. Still, if this is the very last bottle in all of Tevat, getting rid of it would feel like kind of a waste. Maybe we can give it a special meaning somehow. Oh, Paimon's got it! Melusine physiology wasn't affected by the Great Flood, right? So that means the potion should have a permanent effect on you! In that case... What do you say, Seedween? Ever thought about transforming back to the way you used to look? After all, from a Melusine point of view, Paimon bets Melusines look the cutest of all! Paimon... After everything, do you really think it matters whether I'm Melusine or a human? Uh... Well... <sighs> what was Paimon thinking? You made up your mind a long time ago! Yeah, let's just destroy this thing! Leave it to me. I'd like to stay here with my teacher for a little longer. <laughs>